Okay. So here are the rails. <laughs> and here is our show. Completely off. Completely gone today. What in the world? Derailed. <laughs> Yay, you're here. Welcome to the CK and GK podcast. Let's get going. And now it's only fair that I should let you know what you should know. I can't live if living is without Tuesday. Can't give. That's very, like, you're doing what that guy does, that Taylor, like, oh, yeah, Instagrammer yeah, yeah. guy. <laughs> where he cranks that soldier boy right in songs it doesn't need to be cranked into you're just doing it with our intro i, I love should, it. i should i should message him and be like hey man i need your help right <laughs> help me do this any song that has well now you could just take it's his song. Yeah. <laughs> anything he does it into and just throw it in there now yep now you got your inspiration he's got tons for you oh so funny in case you didn't know it's Tuesday. <laughs> it's Tuesday, and we're here, and we're so glad that you are too. Today and we I am are here. So excited about what we're going to talk about today. Yeah, I th- I did not plan this episode. You planned this episode. Today we are here to tell you you're saying things wrong. You're not an yep. adult because you can't say these common phrases correctly. So these commonly misheard and therefore missaid phrases called eggcorns. Egg Which I'm, corns. I'm still not convinced is a real thing. Um, and uh, Jenny, how did you get to this? Like, so I <laughs> need to I, know what's going on. I was down a YouTube hole, as you are sometimes. Mm-hmm. And I found this video by Rob Words. Nice. And um, his video uh, piqued my interest. Oh, peaked like mountain like peak? Like mountain peak. <laughs> Which is wrong. Which is incorrect. Yeah. Yeah. So this is wrong. Peaked is not right. We'll talk more about that later. Um, And I'm also going to include the link to this video because it's a really interesting watch. Uh, That's Jenny. And uh, she is everyone's favorite gracefully goofy model. Ooh, Mm. I like it. Yeah. Gracefully goofy. Gracefully goofy. I think that actually describes you pretty well, I would say. Um, before we keep going, I do want to give a shout out to someone who left us a really nice review. Aww, I think thanks. we're doing this again because we were doing it for a little while and it makes me happy. So we'll get into the real talk in just like 15 seconds. So if you're a skipper, you can skip, but here you go. Um, this is from Kendra May on iTunes and she, or iTunes. We're old. Apple podcasts. She said, <laughs> Mm-hmm. old as a former teacher i totally love and can relate to this podcast it is so much fun and i 100 percent want to hang out with these girls p.s i'm also in texas so let's make it happen kendra okay. may done just reach out like for, for real sure. we'll definitely we we love it we love a good uh friend especially educator friends they're just like something about someone who's been in the trenches with you right 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 okay well okay. speaking of educator this i get to put my teacher hat on yes do it. Okay. So first off, let me tell you this Rob Ward's video was so interesting. Okay. And it was interesting because I'm a dork. But even if you're not nerdy, like you can find value in this. In sure. fact, we have found value in something similar to it. In episode 83, we did misheard song lyrics. Yeah, we did. That was a fun one. Okay. There is an official phrase for this. Oh. They're called Montegreens. Montegreens. Okay. Montegreens. Because in 1954... There was this writer who remembered when she was a kid, her mom used to read the Scottish ballad called The Bonnie Earl O'More. Okay. And she always heard the words Lady Montegreen in the poem when her mom read it to her. But oh. actually, the words are laid him on the green. So it's Mondegreen. Okay. Mondegreen. Okay. Um, so... 
one of my favorites is the Justin Timberlake. Because with your hand in my hand and a pocket full of soap. That's actually not the line. <laughs> uh, no, it's not. <laughs> it's a pocket full of salt. Yes. Um, so those are montagreens, and we talked about them before. Yes. Okay. Um, there's also something called malapropisms. I've heard of it. I've heard it said malapropism, but okay. okay I don't know how yes. to say it. Oh, shoot. Go ahead. I think both pronunciations are fine. Okay. Um, and so this comes from French, which means malapropos. Okay. Now, mal means bad and appropro, right. like appropriate. Right. Okay. So there was a character in a play in the 1770s named Ms. Malaprope. And <laughs> she would try and use big words to sound smart, but she would actually just use a word that sounded like the appropriate big word. So, for example, shoplifters will be prostituted. Oh, my. Instead of prosecuted. I've heard. A couple of ones that are like sound that sound like this. One of them was like, um, at the end of his life, the guy who's a, the aviator, not Leonardo DiCaprio, the guy he plays, and like right now the name is escaping me, but um, he was emaciated at the end of his life, and someone said he was emancipated. Painted, <laughs> yeah, and then that's the, exactly the, right. And then someone <laughs> no. else said, um, instead of trying to like let down your like let down your inhibitions, they said prohibitions. <laughs> Perfect. Yes. So, okay, yes. th these are funny. I'm not meaning to make fun of anyone who uses them, but we're you're a grown up. Oh, I'm sure and you're I've not allowed. Grown ups cannot say these things anymore. We're yes. we're moving from adulthood into being a, an, a true bona fide grown up. Grown up, one episode at a time, and we're going to teach you how to say these things this correctly. This is much more than just being over the age of eighteen, y'all. Right. <laughs> okay, so today we're going to talk about egg corns. Okay. And they're called egg corns because they are a word or a phrase that sounds like and is mistakenly used in a seemingly logical or plausible way for another word or phrase. And I'm taking that from Merriam-Webster's dictionary. It's actually in the dictionary, the word egg corn. Oh, okay. Okay. So this um, came from an article that word history scholar wrote. And they were talking about a woman who um, said that she had found some egg corns and they were causing damage on her car. Uh -oh. And she had actually typed the word egg corns. Oh, dear. And so the, um, the linguist wrote about this in an article and another one was reading it. His name is uh, Jeffrey Pullum. Okay. And he read it and he was like, oh my gosh, there is no description for this. Because it's not that she's using the wrong word. She's actually using real words that make sense. If you've never seen the word acorn written and you live in the South, egg corn, yeah, you might, might hear it as egg corn. Now, look, it's a corn. It's a seed. And yeah. it has like a little sh egg-like shape. Yeah. So what she's saying are is real words and makes sense. So it's, he decided, let's just name it that. If this is giving like instead of Olive Garden, this is giving all of Garden vibes yes. to me. Yes, it's struggling. It is exactly the same thing, right? <laughs> okay. Now, here's the thing that's really interesting, and this is the part that makes you evolve from adult to grown up. Mm. Spell check and Grammarly will not catch these. Because they are real words, and in the most of the time, they even match the correct part, uh, part of speech. Oh. So in the case of acorn, egg corn is being, the word acorn, a noun, is being replaced with two nouns. Yeah. It makes sense. Unless so, you're putting it as one word, then I think it might get Then they'd be like, up. what is an acorn? Yeah. But now that it's an actual word in the dictionary, it might actually not register at all. Um, Who knows? <laughs> okay we're gonna we're we're gonna give this right. a shot teach me okay. the things because i'm sure i've said at least one of these things wrong so there's a lot in here that are pretty common and you might actually know them but then there are some other that i did not know and i learned by watching this video okay so um the first one i want to talk about is a scapegoat oh this is giving michael scott yes they are trying to make me an escape goat <laughs> yes they are yes they are now here's the deal the word is scapegoat. It's yes. one word. It's not 
an escape goat. It's one right. word. And it actually comes from the Christian Bible. Okay. Um, there was a tradition that you would release, you would get a pair of goats. You would release one into the wilderness to represent all of your community's sin, and you would sacrifice the other. And the one that was released was the scapegoat. Oh. So if you are being someone's scapegoat, you are carrying their sin, you are being held guilty for something that you may not have done. Sounds like either option is not really the best, though. I'm going to... I mean, Although, really, like, if I'm I would the goat, much rather be the goat that has to run away than the one that has to get sacrificed. True story. But still, I don't want to true. be blamed for all the things that people did. That's fair. Okay. The next one is a mute point. <gasps> it's a cow's it's... opinion. Yes, yes. <laughs> it's, I actually wrote it's that moo. in there. It's, a, it's like a cow's opinion. It's moo. Okay. <laughs> so this is actually a moot point m-o-o-t okay. not mute m-u-t-e but mute makes sense yeah it's still an adjective it means quiet doesn't matter right if you put the yeah. tv on mute it's not disturbing you anymore but the word is actually moot which means a non-player it doesn't make a difference it's like a cow's so, opinion like a cow's opinion it's moo it's moo i want to tell her that i love her but the point is probably moot mm. jesse's okay. girl Yes. Okay, so the next one is biting my time. No, we don't eat time. Yeah, no, no one bites time. The, right. the phrase is biting my time. And mm -hmm. the adjective, to, or sorry, the verb to bide means to stay, to wait, to hang yes. out where you are. Yes. And in most places in English, we have replaced the word bide with abide. Mm, as yes. in the dude abides because yeah, i'm just yes. hanging i'm just mm -hmm. i'm just staying put right i'm just gonna I'm sit chilling. here and drink my white russian the dude abides yum yep so if you are biding your time you're just hanging out and waiting for something to change yes makes sense all right the next one i did not know people said but apparently they say it enough for it to be in this video okay the feeble position no. No. <laughs> no. I didn't no. even know it was one. Now, I did not know this was a thing. Mm -mm. Yeah, hopefully our listeners know that the word is fetal position, as in how an unborn baby is positioned in the uterus. The fetal yeah. position. Yeah, I, many, I, I, I would go out on a limb and say the majority of our listeners are parents, if not yeah. mothers. <laughs> And many of them would have some inkling of knowledge of what the fetal position is. But the fact that somebody might say feeble position is kind of shocking, but okay. But it I also can, makes I sense. hear it. Yeah, I can hear it. Right? Okay. Like you're sad or you're scared and you're just curled up in the feeble position. <laughs> it's like something your five-year-old would say when they're yes. learning it. Yeah. Yes. Oh, That's man. so good. Okay. Fetal. Got it. Um, Kind of like uh, Star Horse Day. Yes, exactly yes. like Star Horse Day. Okay. The next one, this is one that was new to me. Okay. And it's because I had only really listened to the word and not seen it in writing enough for it to register for me. Okay. This is free reign. Like horses. I, well, that's actually correct. Oh, oh. I was incorrect in thinking that it's the king can do whatever he does. <laughs> free reign over the kingdom. <laughs> I like but it. That makes sense. Okay. Right, right, it yeah, it does. I got that one. That one. I, I, I hear it. Egg she corn, says it no. makes sense, folks, because I just told her that I got it all the time. Right. Egg corn. I can't get behind. Feeble position. No. No. Free reign like this. And they're, they sound exactly the same. They at do. Least. And that's it. Yeah. But it's free reign as in letting go of the reins of the horse and letting it decide where to go. Is that a homophone? When they're it the is. same. Okay. Same sound. Yes. Okay. 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 All right. Um, the next one I think is probably a middle school mistake. I have to imagine that at some point you see this in writing and realize that it's not correct. Mm. Um, but an old wise tale. <laughs> oh, that's just an old wise tale. 
Okay. Uh. So the phrase is actually old wives tale as in yeah. belonging to the wife. Right. And this comes from oral tradition of storytelling. And many women who, you know, did not have the privilege of education and were illiterate, probably on purpose, down with the patriarchy. Anyway, um, <laughs> they would pass these stories and remedies and recipes and folklore, etc. They would pass it down orally. And so mm. a story that like, hmm, I don't know if, if you rub onion on your eye, that sty is going to go away. That sounds like an old wives' tale. That sounds excruciating. Oh right? my goodness. I've also heard the onion on the bottoms of your feet. Oh, or next to your... No, no, no. Just for if you're sick. Oh. Like you put onions on the bottom of your feet and then you wrap them in... Um, I don't know, like saran wrap or something. And Swatling then go clothes. And laid it in a manger. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. But uh, I also have heard cut open an onion and leave it next to your bed. When you're sick and you sleep okay. and it's supposed to turn black and it's absorbing all the gross stuff. Have you I... seen Sleepless in Seattle? Yeah. Okay. There's this scene where they start talking about like ways to get rid of hiccups and they're like, oh no, you have to drink up uh, water upside down. No, no, no. That, that you need to put a glass of, uh, you have to put sugar in a glass of water. And they're just like completely on a rabbit trail. They weren't even talking about hiccups. <laughs> But it was just like the remedies start coming out. Like, this is what's happening right now. Like, oh, well, here's another way you can use onions. Have you tried pickling them? They're really great on paper. <laughs> like, we're just talking about onions now. Yeah. The the hiccups thing, The you're just reminding me. There, That's from Judy Bloom. That's a, um, oh, I forget the name of the book. But you, you put like a little packet of sugar on your tongue and they take a drink of water and it's supposed to make your hiccups go away. Oh it's, a, it's in a Judy Bloom book. Wow. Anyway, keep okay. going. All right, the next one My is bad. scandally, scandally clad. As in, Ooh, your outfit I hear it. is causing a scandal. Mm hmm, I hear it. Totally makes sense. Now, I don't think that scandally is an adverb. I think I that's a made up word. I, scandally. It sounds like it, yeah. But I wouldn't um, know. But it makes sense. Like, sure. you're causing a scandal with your outfit. It's actually scantily clad with a T. Like coming from the adjective scant, which right, means like not enough, not enough, right, right. Okay, man, give her a scant portion because she's already had three. I mean, Caitlin talking about me and mashed potatoes. <laughs> it's really funny. All right. Um. So if you are scantily clad, you are not wearing enough clothing. Got according it. to the person who's saying it. Probably not the person who's wearing it because if you are comfortable, you put it on. Preach. And that's all I have to say about that. Mm -hmm. All right. Um. The next one is to pass mustard <laughs> y'all this is something you do at the dinner table you pass the mustard you pass the mustard but if you are talking about going through an inspection or being enough you have passed muster muster is a military term that means to gather together or to have an inspection I... as in i'm gonna muster up the energy to change out all of the sheets in the house this is Okay, I knew the word muster as in muster up the energy, but I have definitely been saying to pass the mustard. <laughs> <laughs> I am going to be a grown up now because I. See, I've... there you go. Because I. All right, we just got a handful wrong. more. Now, there are like hundreds of these. Since the 2003 article and um, Professor Pullum, uh, or Pullum, uh, naming this phenomena of acorn and linguists from all over have started to collect them because it is a very unique thing in our language to take um an idiom or a colloquialism and then replace it with another word that actually makes sense right yeah. this isn't just misheard this is you trying to make sense of something you don't know um, I remember in the 90s, it was old timers disease. Oh, right? yeah. We all know now as Alzheimer's. But like when I was a kid, and this was like, new no, and that's news what you worthy, thought of. Mm -hmm. We thought it was old timers disease. Okay, so here's a couple more I've got for you. You've got another thing coming. If yes. you think that you are going to go out of the house with that makeup on, you got another thing coming that scandally clad. Yes. You've got another thing coming. 
Okay, so it's actually, you've got another think coming because you should rethink that. You are not wearing kiss makeup to school <laughs> if it's not Halloween. I'm sorry. You can put on as much eyeliner as you want, but um, we're not going to dress up like cats and go to school. Raccoons. Raccoons. There you go. All right, next one. For all intensive purposes. This was your suggestion. I cannot. This is a classic. Yeah. This is a classic because the phrase is actually for all intents, all meanings, and purposes. In all ways that we could use this. Right. Not in all intensive purposes as in the most useful purposes. The most I've also intensive heard, purposes. I've heard also for all intended purposes, which oh. that one could that would also could, an acorn? Yes, it is an acorn, but I could hear like I can hear that being used correctly, right? Like if you're going to use it for all of its intended purposes, that's how I you know you but but mostly when it's said wrong, it's for all intensive purposes. Right. That's not a thing, guys. We're not saying that anymore. For all intents and purposes. Here's another one I've been getting wrong. This day in age. Ooh, it's and. It's and. Yep. In this day and age, cell phones are common. Oh my gosh. So it's about 200 years old. And it's about talking about the span of time. You are talking about the current day and age, not the day in age, which I have been using the wrong word. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. Two more that I thought were interesting. Again, there's hundreds of these. Go do some research. Okay. The next one is towing the line. And much like free reign, we do have a homophone here. Mm -hmm. I am spelling it T-O-W as in I am towing the line. I am pulling it behind me. Yes. But that is not it at all. It mm. is towing the line as in T-O-E. Mm -hmm. You put your toe on the line. Mm -hmm. And this comes from naval ships in the 1700s-ish. There's some writings from the late 17th century, some from the early 1800s. Nobody's sure exactly what it is, but it's about the 1700s. Um, they would have the sailors line up for muster, of all things, um, nice. line up for an inspection. And they would have to put their bare feet, their toes along the line in the planks of the wood on the ship. Oh, you're towing. And the so they they put their toe to the line. They tow the line. And if your I, toe is not on the line, you are not in the line correctly, and you did not pass muster. I like that. So when I was, I actually knew that it was towing um, with your feet, because when I was a kid, um, and I worked at a daycare, one of the games that I would have the kids play is called Ports of Call, and you it was in a gym, and you would call out the different parts of the ship. So, you know, port, starboard, things like that. And then you would say, um, you may it overboard. And you, they had to grab a partner and like pretend to row a boat together. But one of them was toe the line. And the kids all had to get on a line in the gym and like line their feet up appropriately. Oh my on the gosh. Line. That's amazing. Yeah, that one was fun. That was a good I game. I want to play this game. It's fun. It, it, it wears kids out because it's I hard. <laughs> it's hard. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. The last one that I will share with you today is coming down the pipe. Oh, Lord. As... <laughs> this As one makes the sense. Itsy bitsy spider. Yeah. <laughs> is coming down the pipe. Oh, dear. Okay. So the actual phrase is coming down the pike yes. with a K. Yes. Because pike is short for turnpike. Or a, t or a toll road to those right. of you who don't live in the Northeast. And it's saying that another thing is coming down the road. Yes. So be aware because this is coming down the pike. Thank you. That one makes sense. All right. Easy. So this day and age, you should be able to say these correctly. Otherwise, you've got another thing coming. <laughs> um, we'll you break. should. Yeah. You should tell us these. If you have one. Yeah. Tell them to us. Okay, now let's take them. Okay. All right, are you ready to come back? I'm ready to come back. Okay, let's talk about what we're obsessed with. And I will start, and I will start by saying that I know this makes me sound snobby. 
And well, I will even say it doesn't just make me sound snobby. It rec- it shows that I truly am a snob. And well, I'm now that it. you're correcting all of your egg corns, yeah. you're definitely going <laughs> to sound like a snob with this plus your correct phrasing. I don't know. I had free reign on what I wanted to say today. So, <laughs> hey, all right. So here is what I'm obsessed with right now. And it's because I am in a season where a lot of things are coming to a close. Okay. It is the end of the school year. It is also the end of my service leagues year. And so a lot of things are just kind of wrapping up and getting ready for a fresh start. It's also wedding season. Mm. And so I am seeing this happen a lot. And I am here to tell you all about how obsessed I am with toast etiquette. And I am not talking about my favorite food, double cooked bread. I am talking about (laughs) making a toast. I was like, first you toast it, then you make sure it's the appropriate golden brown color. Then you put on the butter. You put it butter side up. Otherwise, you might as well live with those zooks across the bridge. (laughs) Okay, tell me. It's because you haven't read the butter battle book. Go read that. Learn about communism and then come back. Okay. Oh. All right. So here's the deal. This Uh, is from Emily Post, who you know is the queen of etiquette. Yes. And we're on like generation 19 of Emily Post books. But this is also something that if you know, people will appreciate about you. Okay. More okay. grown up advice. I'm it's here for more it. grown up advice. And okay. actually it's me complaining, but I'm complaining in the way of making advice. So I'm really just okay. moaning, but I'm going to moan in a way that sounds like I'm trying to help people out. Okay. okay. So the first one is when you are trying to get the attention of the crowd you should not (laughs) tap your glass Ah! okay not only is that obnoxious it's also dangerous you could break the glass now you've got everyone's attention because you just broke a champagne flute with a butter knife you may actually just say where jack does that i believe it i believe it you're hitting a glass with a knife excuse me excuse me yeah. Yeah. So you either say, may I have your attention, please? Or you say, it's time for a toast. Now, mm. the only person who is saying this is the host of the event. Because oh, unless yeah. they have charged someone else with making the first toast, the host goes first. Mm. Do not make a toast at an event without being the host yourself or having the blessing of the host to offer the first toast. They may not want toast to be made. It could be that the event they are throwing in the person's honor, that person has said, okay, I yes, you may throw a baby shower for me, but please don't make a toast or anything weird like that. So don't make a toast yeah. unless you have the blessing of the host. Okay. You must stand to offer a toast unless you are unable mm. to stand. You okay. should... Um, toast only with a glass that is not empty. It does not need to be full of a boozy beverage. Water is just People fine. toast with empty glasses? Your glass should have something in it. Who's doing that? People who want to make a toast but haven't uh, refilled their glass, I guess. I guess. The, Don't do the that. Drink. Yeah, the drink doesn't matter. No. You, you, can, you can toast at an event that doesn't serve anything alcoholic. Toast does not equal alcoholic beverage. No. Okay. Um, you should raise your glass only to eye level, not overhead. <laughs> um, raising your glass overhead is what you do when you get into the pool and you're trying not to spill it. <laughs> yeah. Or you are dancing on the floor at the club. hey When you are making a toast, your glass goes to eye level. Okay. So that you can see that there's liquid in it. Right. Think like Leo DiCaprio in that like meme. Oh, yes. yes. The meme. Yes. The me- yes. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. Um, do not drink a toast that is made in your honor. If you are being toasted, you remain seated. You smile. You nod. You can say thank you if you want. But really, your job is just to sit there quietly and appreciate it. So I shouldn't get anxious and slam the drink that I have in my hand down my throat because... You have to do that right before they make the toast. When they say it's time for a toast, you throw yours back. Oh, got it. Okay. Okay. (laughs) Um, If you are making a toast, you should end your toast with a toast. 
Yeah, stump speeches are not okay. (laughs) It's not a speech. It's a toast. If it was a speech, they would just say, can you make a speech? Right. But if you're making a toast, you need to have something that closes and that the crowd can either repeat the toast or answer in kind. So I could say, here's to Caitlin. And everyone would say, to Caitlin. Or I would say, she's a hell of a girl. And they would say, here, here. Yeah. But you need to offer a call and response because part of the toast is involving the community in all celebrating the person or group of people that you're lifting up. Got it. All right. So here's to toast etiquette. Here, here. All right. That's my I'll, obsession. I Sorry. Like it. I'm off my uh, soapbox now. Okay. Mine is completely unrelated. <laughs> Mine is not about etiquette or saying anything correctly. Mine is because about... you are not snobby. It depends on the day. <laughs> Sometimes I am. There are certain things I'm snobby about. And I'm going to go off. You had your moment to go off. This is me going off right here. Okay. There is a viral post going around. And I forgive me, I don't know the girl's name. I'll find it and I'll link it in the show notes or the, on the blog post for the episode. Uh, she made a comment that said, I can tell if someone is Gen Z or millennial in five seconds ish by looking at them at the gym. Oh, <laughs> and I'm shocked that you haven't heard this. You don't know the answer yet. It sucks. <laughs> what? Okay. Take a moment back. Come back with me. It's 1998. Your socks hit mid-calf. And you're wearing them with slides. That's okay. me. Okay. My Adidas slides. Uh, part of that is because soccer and stuff. That's just how I wore right, my right, socks. Right. But the other part of it is just that's what you did. Like you wore that like, calf-high socks. And then we get to high school and the socks gradually have to get shorter and shorter until they are no show socks. No, I and was just then... gonna say, I like if I ran out of no show socks, I would fold my you other socks down so that down. you wouldn't see them. Mm-hmm. And they would bunch or hurt or whatever, and you could not, you couldn't adjust them in front of all these people. You had because then people would know that you're wearing that you socks. folded your socks down. Uh, no, not okay. So the new thing. Now what we're all old because we don't do is back to wearing socks that you pull up. My Sam, my son is wearing socks that you pull up like tube oh socks. Gosh. Just this morning I asked Kit if he wanted to wear a pair of my socks because his weren't clean. He said, no, I would rather wear my dirty ones. Yeah. Because he wanted them to show. Yeah. So uh, we're wearing tall socks again, and um, you can put tall socks on the top of my urn. I will not (laughs) wear them. I won't. I will not. There's the little top, the little, the little piece that goes in the top, and it looks like a little, the top of the vase or whatever. You can put, that's where you can put the sock. You will not get me back into those socks again. We are not going there anymore. I am wearing my no-show socks as long as I possibly can. I love that. The only time I can think of wearing socks, besides like with boots, which is totally different, but the time I, the only time I can think of is wearing socks that show in my life now is at some kind of campy event where I'm wearing knee socks in the color of whatever team I'm trying to support. The last time I wore socks like that, aside from boots, again, was when you and I dressed up for 70s 70s day. day. (laughs) And I was being Joey Lauren Adams from Days and Confused. I'm not going back down that road again. I'm not doing it. So yeah, I have call me a millennial in bright you colors. Right. So that like if I'm on the purple squad, I can wear my purple knee socks. Totally fine. You call me a millennial all you want. I- I've I've slowly started to embrace less than skinny jeans, right? So fine, but I'm not I'm not doing it. I'm not having the two short pants with my socks showing. No. It's not happening. So take your Gen Z socks and keep them to yourself because I don't want them. That's my obsession is me just ranting about this. I will not go back. I'm not doing it. Okay. So 
that brings me to the gem. Okay. And I should be ranting about this. I should be angry and I should be back in the part of the episode where I was cursing the patriarchy. <laughs> but I got to tell you, I kind of liked it a little bit. Uh-oh. The other day I was going to an event and I had worked very hard on my look. It's like building a boat. It takes all afternoon. Yeah. <laughs> it's like a ship yeah. in a bottle. <laughs> I wanted to look like I had just thrown myself together, but I also wanted to be as perfectly polished as possible. Right. Building a boat. Yes. So um, hair, makeup, a casual outfit that looked like I could have just thrown it on, but everybody knows I live in t-shirt and shorts. This was intentional what I was wearing. It yeah, was like a tried. blouse tucked into my jeans or something that yeah. everyone else just happens to have and I have to really think about putting on. <laughs> and I walk out the front door to get in the car and there is a man, I won't say gentleman because of what just is about to happen. Oh no. There is a man working on my next door neighbor's lawn. And he looks at me and he whistles and oh, hey. says, looking good. He is yes, like, I, I don't know, 19. And I should be so offended. Meanwhile, I'm like, yeah, I am. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah, was not I am. even mad. No. I was like, yes, I got cat cold. Yep. It's been a long time. I might be 40, but I look fabulous. It's right. fine. It's fine. You know what? Whatever makes you feel good. Now. Don't but I should have dressed anything. that guy down. I should have said, yeah, like, you should be like, not, not appropriate. Right. Not appropriate. If you want to offer me a compliment, you may, but you do not whistle at women. But meanwhile, I was just like, mm -hmm, yeah, thanks. whistle again, whistle again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Louder, honey, open the door. You need to hear yeah. something. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. Okay. Well, I'm going to do a little brag on my sister. My baby sister, and I need y'all to understand, I'm 40, right? So when I say baby sister, I don't mean like she's a baby, but she's been a baby because like I was 12 when she was born. So she's 28 years old. And today, today, my baby sister is a doctor. Oh my God. And I'm so proud of her. Well, um, on the family calendar that my dad so lovingly puts together, um, he has that her graduation is tomorrow. <laughs> okay. 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 It's not, it's, it's happening right now. Um, and I got an alert telling me that it was time sensitive, that her graduation is happening. And it says traffic is light. It will take 29 hours and 44 minutes to get to the <laughs> university of New England. <laughs> and I was like, I call her pickle. I was like, be right why, there. Pickle. Why I'm is your phone telling you today that you have 29 yeah. hours to get some? Because breakfast. if I'm going to drive there, I better leave right now. Yes. Like, <laughs> cause he put the alert on it for when it's time to leave. So that's what showed up. And I just started cackling. So, I mean, I took a screenshot, highlighted it. And I was like, be right there. Pickle. I'm coming. <laughs> Might be a little late. <laughs> Traffic is light, though. It should be okay. It should get the running really, really smoothly. No problem. As long as I don't stop to put gas in the car or pee, I'll be right. there in 30 hours. Or sleep hours. or do anything normal, yeah. like a human <laughs> thing, right? I'll be there in 29 hours. I won't even miss it. I love when parents do stuff like that. That you is cute. alert in there for when I'm supposed to leave. None Thank of us you. could go. We're, we're not going. Thanks. Right, but... right. And if I did need to leave, I would probably need to leave on a plane yesterday. Yeah. Congratulations. I'm not Sarah. driving to University of New England. No. From Central not, Texas. Not from Central Texas. Pennsylvania. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Central Texas. No. Congratulations, Kara. I'm proud of you. I love you. And I'll be there Congrats. in 30 hours. <laughs> Dr. Pickle. Dr. Pickle. Oh my gosh. Yes. Dr. Okay. Pickle. Love it. I love it. All right. Well, it is just about that time. And before we go, I want to make a plug. Please tell your friends. Please share this episode in person with an actual connection to some other people you know. Mm -hmm. Word of mouth is the best. And we really need you to connect with someone else and tell them how we've changed your life. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you you thought it was an escape goat. <laughs> Yeah.
They are trying to make me an escape. This is a doggy eat dog world. Oh, no. A doggy dog. Doggy dog world. <laughs> doggy dog world. <laughs> Snoop doggy. No, never mind. It's time to go. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Bye. Hey friends, thanks for listening to the CK and GK podcast. Find us at CK and GK podcast on Instagram and Twitter and rate review and subscribe on Apple podcasts, Spotify, good pods, or anywhere else that you pod. See you next time.